Good morning. It's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. Today is Vlogtober the 28th. We've got three more days before it's all over. I don't know how I feel about that. I've been... I enjoy doing these. I know I don't always uh, stick to a daily schedule because of things that are going on, but it's been fun. And again, we'll do it again in December. That should be interesting. <laughs> I have continued to work on my whips, you know. And one of those is this shawl that I have been working on. This is where I was a couple of weeks ago. This is how much I've managed to get done. Yeah, it's not getting a whole lot of love. Um, basically, I've been working on those quilts for the babies. And that has been, that has taken up a lot of my time, as well as doing the turkey hats. That has taken up some of my time. Um, and of course, you know, now we've added the uh, panda bears, which see, got eyes, now he's less scary. We're adding those, we're adding zebras, we're, we're adding it all in going full force so and some of the other girls don't care to um, make the eyes and noses those kind of things so generally they'll make the hats and I finish them off which is fine not a big deal but it just means you have to sit your butt down in a chair and get those little items done yeah um, and you know I've had this floater in this right eye Today it's really bothering me. It's like a Chinese glyph that clouds my vision. So um, it it can get annoying and uh, gets in the way of some of the work. However, it didn't get get in the way of any of the uh, Tunisian shawl that I've been working on. I had added these rows of laces. Now I'm working on this getting up to the point where I'll be ready to do the center panel and of course when I get to that point I am going to film that for Tunisian Tuesday I do hope that I know I've told you about David Birchall he has a beautiful scarf it's done in two colors that he has done a tutorial on and he released that yesterday afternoon for that scarf. You can buy the pattern. Um, you can follow along with the tutorial. It's not a you know a big hefty price. I think it's like two something, maybe three dollars for the pattern. You know, it's it's something that I am going to purchase because although I can follow along on the tutorial and I know how to do the two color. Um, I, you know, I like to support my other, um, folks that, that do this kind of thing. You know, we do it for a living. David had a rough haul for a while there. He's, you know, getting back into things. So, um, I would like to support other people that put out patterns. As you know, the Cozy Cottage, Hannah, came out with her Beatrix, um, shawl it's a beautiful shawl um, I do plan on purchasing that so I think she's releasing that October the 31st and of course she will be releasing a code that's going to give you a dollar off I think or a certain percentage off so make sure you look for that announcement on Wednesday um, you know it's nice to be able to save a few dollars here or there and uh, a lot of these patterns I don't think it's too much to pay four or five dollars now I have had a couple of patterns that I've seen that I really liked that were a lot higher um, but I've not been willing to spend over a certain amount for one pattern that's just me you know I don't know if other people do that or not but I have a set limit I'm not willing to go higher than, 
you know, a certain amount for a pattern for a scarf or a hat. You know, I'm just not. I'm not going to pay more than $6 for a scarf or a hat pattern. And I don't care what it is. Uh, that's, and that's just me. Now, if there were, if it was a pattern with some hints on how to change it up, you know, ways that you can make it look a little different, whatever, I might consider paying a little more than that, but not really. <laughs> I don't mind paying, you know, for sets of patterns, like ebooks or like three patterns, you know, a certain amount, like $10. I feel like that's worth the value. Um, I know it's kind of hard for us, you know, because a lot of things digital you're worried about purchasing. Now, I have everything backed up on my Dropbox, so, and of course we pay for a larger Dropbox because there are a lot of things in there that I have created and I have done and I don't want to lose them. I have had past computers, PCs, that uh, just all of a sudden one time just <laughs> crapped out on you and I lost quite a bit of information on those. Not everything, but quite a bit. And some of those are patterns that I create, created years ago, gave away free. I would like to, and I'm going through looking for those, to be able to put them back out there for folks for free. You know, things like, um, I've told you before about the interchangeable wreaths pattern that I had created when I was um, one of the editors of a pagan news craft letter. And I was showing people how, and this this was a neighbor that had come to me and asked me to take it over because she had run out of ideas on how to create things that were what she called craft related. So um, I told her, I said, doesn't matter what religion you are, you can take any craft and apply that and, you know, for symbols or whatever. She said, oh, I don't think so. So it was kind of a challenge between us. And uh, she was, you know, quite fascinated that I was able to do some of those things. But in one of those patterns, it was basically seasons. Um, just a small wreath. And, you know, you, you crochet a base for the wreath that for each month, you know, that you wanted to change or a month, you know, that you could use again. And then you could clip on the things that you wanted or you could just, you know, re-crochet and then attach the items you had so that all you had to do was change the outside of that wreath. You didn't have to create a new wreath every time. And that was just something that I had in my head because I have lived in small apartments and there's not a lot of storage space many times so you can't have you know, 15, 20 wreaths. You don't have any garage to put it in or, you know, extra storage bins unless you happen to purchase one, you know, to store it in. So my idea was these things that when they, when you finish for like, let's say January with snowflakes, you know, on the outside, nice pretty blues, you know, for your wreath, that you could take it off the wreath form, fold it up, put it away in just a box, like a banker's box, for the whole year, all these um, wreath decorations. So I had created a whole year of those wreath things, and, you know, those patterns were on some of those PCs that passed away suddenly. So we were able to recover some of those, but I have to go through and do some different editing on them. Um, just to correct some of the things and change them around. So, and those will be things that I'll be releasing as we go. I'm planning on some of those. I had figured I would start with January and then each month, you know, update with some new things, those kind of things. And those, of course, will be free um, because they were free initially. So... Yeah, you know, a few things here, there. You know, you can change things up a lot. 
Today I'm drinking coffee. Um, I did want to tell you when we were grocery shopping yesterday, yeah, normally I do follow a more ketogenic diet, but uh, yesterday we were shopping and they had the maple Cheerios on sale. Sidebar. So um, I looked at them and I've had a couple of people say they were pretty good. So I thought, you know what? That kind of sounds good. This time of year, for some reason, I like things that have maple in them. Uh, kind of crave those things. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to buy the cereal. And, you know, every once in a while I have some cereal for breakfast. Two thumbs up. They're, they're good. It's not a heavy maple. It's very slight maple um, flavor. And, uh, yeah, I like them. I'm pretty sure my husband's going to like them, which is fine because that means he'll eat most of the cereal. And I got my taste today, and that'll probably do me for the rest of the, the week or so. But I found when you follow certain diets or food plants that if you start craving something, sounds good, you just need to go ahead and bite the bullet and sometimes have it, get it out of your system, then you're good to go. And that's what I do sometimes, you know. Can't eat cheesecake all the time. <laughs> Although it's one of my favorites, so. You know, I'd love to eat che cheesecake for breakfast every day, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if we could get away with this, something like that? Although I do know there are some people that do that. Okay, folks, I'm going to go for now. This afternoon is going to be spent in the sewing room, working on some of those things. Um, hopefully the eye won't bother me too much. Uh, and I think it's right at that point, it's about ready to be fully absorbed, but it's still kind of, you know, got to show off its little floater business. And for those of you that don't know about floaters, Unfortunately, as we get older, it happens. It's the vitreous that's in the eye that just kind of gives off these things. And uh, you have to deal with it. Also, if you've had cataract surgery, which I have, uh, you have to deal with that. And of course, nobody said getting old was going to be easy. Maybe the golden years, but it's not all that golden. And I'm almost an undocumented senior, people. I'm like, what, three months away from being a undocumented senior? Just looking forward to that day, too, when I can finally register at the senior center. <laughs> oh, and that's silly how you get things in your head like that. Oh, well, I'm going to go. See you again tomorrow. Everybody have a great day, and remember, choose to be kind.